Welcome to the fifth edition of SHS This Month. First up, we have Liam and Tag's basketball interviews. Welcome back to SHS This Month, fifth edition. I'm Jake, and I'm here with uh, Liam Pearl, Tag Straszewski, and we're going to be asking him some questions about the, uh, the basketball team. So the first question I have for you guys right now is, how is the season going so far? I know you guys have played two games. Uh, right now, 0-2, so kind of a slow start. Um, but I think, I think every day we're getting better. And uh, I think we'll just keep that momentum going forward. Yeah, I think like LT said, slow start, but I think we're getting better every practice, every day, and we got a big one tomorrow and one game at a time, basically, early season. So yeah, you guys will get there. And next question is, who are some key players in the team right now? Um, so. Right now, Jaden Haywood uh, leads us in scoring, definitely run the offense um, through him. Um, Matt Greenspoon, he's putting up a lot of points for us. On the defensive side, I'd say Tag and Jared um, doing a good job um, taking the ball handles away. Uh, we got two good freshmen who are up this year. Obviously, big roles to fill because they're freshmen, and we're asking a lot from them. So, Aiden Rydon and Anthony Alessi, but I think they're ready for the challenge, and they're doing a good job so far. Awesome. And what game are you guys looking forward to most this season? Um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, honestly. Uh, I think the whole school should be there uh, last day before break. First they, home game. First right? home game, so yeah, definitely tomorrow. Yeah, I think like LT said, you want to take it one game at a time. Obviously, can't will be fun. That's like the rivalry game, but tomorrow, yeah. All right. Um, what do you guys do in the off season to prepare for the season? Uh, in the off season, we have a summer league and a fall league, so returning players can. Um, join up and just play other towns in the league and other towns across the state that we might play. Um, it's no coaches, so it's just players. So it's really good for the guys to get together and play. Yeah, like LT said, we're all getting work in summer league. That's basically it. And last question, what is the guy's favorite part about playing basketball? Uh, I just like being around the guys, honestly. Uh, it's, every day it's, it's fun going into practice. Every game is fun, especially when you have good coaches that make it enjoyable to be there and work hard. It's, um, so it's always a good time. Yeah, I think we all look forward to the games and especially playing on Friday nights and the whole town or whole school comes to watch you play. It's definitely a lot. It's what the practices are very rewarding in that aspect. Awesome. Well, good looking at you guys this season. Thank you for joining us on SHS This Month, 5th edition. Hope to see you next time. Up next, we have Chris, Uden, and Dylan with SHS Sports Hub. Welcome back to SHS Sports Hub where we talk about sports. First off, let's get started with some Patriots football. What do you guys think the Patriots need to do this offseason to be back in the playoffs this year? Me personally, I think the Patriots can manage to make the playoffs next season. I think they need to make a couple moves for wide receiver and probably some old linemen, but I think the defense is already pretty much set for next season. I think the Patriots, they got to draft a wide receiver like Zay Flowers, especially. He had an incredible year at BC with 12 touchdowns, breaking the school record. So I think he's an incredible fit for Patriots, and they just got to shop for wide receivers in free agency, like Alan Lazard or Jarvis Landry. Um, as we talk about Boston, let's talk about some Celtics. What are your guys' thoughts on the Celtics, the way they're playing right now? My personal thoughts on the Celtics, I think they're pretty good. I think right now they're dealing with a lot of injuries, but if they have a full healthy team, I think they'll be set to make it pretty deep in the playoffs. I think Celtics, they got to stop being injured. Like, that's simple as that. Their bench is doing a great job of playing and coming out and showing up. But their starters, they got to be healthy and be ready to play for the playoffs. Um, and finally, Conor McGregor is set to fight Michael Chandler. Who do you think will win? I think it's going to be a good fight. Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler, they're one of the best at their sports. So it's going to be fun. Me personally, I agree. Actually, I think Conor McGregor is going to Knock him out. Yeah. And that'll do it for SHS Sports Hub. Now back to SHS this month. Third, we got Luca interviewing Mr. Million. Hello, I'm Luca Yakbucci. I'm here with Mr. Million. I have a few questions for him. What's up, Luca? How are you doing? Good. Good? All right. What is your favorite topic to teach in history? Actually, my favorite topic to teach is what I'm going to be teaching right now, which is the Civil War. I love to talk about the Civil War because it shows the differences and how people, each side always believes that their side is better than another. And you get to really focus on 
the strengths of each side as well as the weaknesses of each side. So I always love teaching about the Civil War and there's good movies that go along with it, like the movie Glory and this movie called The Conspirator. What's the what's your favorite historical figure in the Civil War? In the Civil War, who? I mean, it, it, it sounds pretty cliche, but I think Abraham Lincoln, because you think about all the things that he did um, with the Emancipation Proclamation. You think about the fact that he allowed African Americans to um, be in the army and fight for their freedom because they were fighting for more than other people in the army were fighting for, you know, they, they were fighting for their freedom, you know. Other people in the army were fighting, and even if they had lost, they would still be free. But African Americans, at the same time, if they had lost, they wouldn't be free. So they were fighting for a lot. Out of all history topics, what's your favorite movie about it? Uh, ooh, ooh, jeez. Out of all my, I'd probably say Glory. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to go here. I went to school here. Um, Dr. Scalane was my history teacher, and uh, I borrowed the movie Glory from her, and she had to borrow it back because I took it for so long. So it was a movie that I loved to watch, and I love to show the kids about it uh, because it was it was very historically accurate, and it just had some great actors in it, like Matthew Broderick and um, Denzel Washington. How do you encourage your students to want to learn about past events? Um, I try to relate it to events that go on today, and I try to relate it to their lives. If I have to throw in it, uh, throw in something like that has to do with TikTok or Instagram, that's how I relate it to their lives. Um, I think when people realize that things are similar to what they're going through, it helps them to, you know, how do I say it? It helps them to, like, you know, be one with them and realize that they're going through the same struggle. So when you, things are relatable to you, people tend to focus on it a little bit more. What is your biggest strength as a history teacher? I think, I think the fact that I care. Um, I care about every single one of my students and I don't, you know, judge my students based on past incidents. I take every day by what it is. Every day is a new day. If you frustrated me and two days prior to that, I don't care. I just go into the next day as if it's a completely new day and as, as if I first met you for the first time. What inspired you to be a history teacher? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Bechet knows this. Uh, the principal who was here before, his name was Dr. Davis. This was way before you guys this time. He was the principal um, from... 2001 I think to 2003 and he was also a history teacher and he wrote history books and you know he was an inspiration to me he always looked out for me um, so that was part of the reason why I became a history teacher and some of the history teachers that I had uh, Dr. Scalane, Miss Manchester those were some of the inspirations that I had and I used them as a reason for me to become a history teacher and I like history. Was history your favorite high school subject? Um, my favorite high school subject was gym. Uh, I loved to play basketball, and when we could play basketball, it was great. Um, learning wasn't always the thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to go and play ball. And, you know, it's you grow up, and then you start to focus on more things because, you know, basketball is not your life. Uh, regardless of what people say, ball is life. It's, it's not life because <laughs> you do something after ball, so... Um, I focus on history, uh, but in high school, it was all about gym. I love me some gym. Thank you for joining us. Back to SHS this month. Now we've got Emma and Lucas with the Grammys recap. Hello all, Emma Benoit here, joined with Lucas Prokraka. And today we will be discussing the music industry's biggest night, the 2023 Grammy Awards. The Grammys are a series of awards presented each year in the United States by the Recording Academy. They are meant to recognize spectacular work in the music industry. And today, me and Emma are going to give you our inside scoop on four specific topics. Album of the Year, Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Grammy history that was made. So let's get into it. So first we have Album of the Year Award, and Harry Styles won that with his album, Harry's House. So, Lucas, what do we think? Okay, so I listened to the album, 
It was it was a good album. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. It had great songs, great hits, all the things to you know make an album of the year winner. But when looking at all the other categories in album of the year, I just feel like it totally could have gone to someone else. That someone else being Beyonce <laughs> for Renaissance. To me, that was just the perfect album, and I think she deserved album of the year. What do you think? Yeah, so I really liked some of the songs. I wouldn't say I listened to his album, so I can't give like a good opinion, but um, I know As It Was and Late Night Talking mm -hmm. were some really catchy hits. Yeah. And I know he has like his res residency in New York, mm -hmm. so I think that kind of swayed like the popular opinion. But as far as like when you said Beyonce, I think she did really deserve that, especially it was a different, it was a totally different vibe oh, so different. with what she comes out. It's like EDM, like dance mm -hmm. music that's like yeah. really catchy. So I think that was a really fun album. No, yeah, I totally agree. Her, this kind of album was so, it was such a different style of music for her, yeah. but it worked so well like in her catalog. And when it was a kind of album when you listen to it from like start to finish, and each song was so different, but still connected. And it just, it felt so right. Like every time I listen to that album, so there's some albums that I listen to and I can't listen from start to finish, but that album, I can't. And it's a long album too. Yeah, And I also love is. how like every song flows into the next. So it feels almost like a piece of work and not even an album. So to me, it, it deserved album of the year and mm -hmm. it was snubbed for that. So. Yeah, it's a very like dancey album. So if anyone watching is into like that type of music and you just want to dance, then listen to her newest album. Oh, for sure. Next up, we have Record of the Year, which was won by Lizzo for her hit song, About Damn Time. So Emma, what do we think about this? So, I like the song. It was a catchy little song. Um, I wouldn't, compare to the other nominations, I would say like Steve Lacey, Bad Habit, mm. my like one of the top songs of the summer. Oh yeah. Um, it was on my playlist. And Me then, so. Um, Doja Cat with Woman. Mm. I love Doja Cat. She's probably one of my top five favorite artists. So, um, yeah, I think it was well deserved. She's worked hard, I think. But I would have also, I wouldn't mind to see the other people win because yeah. I think they were good too. Yeah, I know. I, I agree with you on that. But also, I think About Damn Time totally deserved Record of the Year. Like, to me, that was just. That was a big song for 2022, and everyone was listening to it. It was all over the radios, all over, you know, streaming. Um, it was all over streaming on music and the top of the charts. And it's just a fun, feel-good, like dance song. It's super catchy. Yes. I agree, though. The there were lots of other artists in that category that could have won. Like definitely, Bad Habit. I feel like Bad Habit and About Damn Time. They're two very different songs, but they had both very high chances of winning that. So if it went to either or of those artists, I think yes. And mm -hmm. I love the song Woman by Doja Cat, but to me that felt more like a summer 2021 song mm -hmm. than a 2022 song. So Yeah, that's true. Even it's though it has the ability to have won Record of the Year, I think it was more of a last year kind of thing. So definitely my top two were Steve Lacey and Lizzo, and I would have been happy with either one of them winning it. So. Yeah, totally. Next we have the Song of the Year Award, and that goes to Bonnie with Just Like That. So, Lucas, what do we think about Song of the Year? Well, it's, um, it's, uh, I mean, I can't really say anything because I have never heard the song, um, which is not common for a Song of the Year winner. Usually it's something that people are familiar with. But I genuinely, I mean, I, afterwards, after hearing about that she won, I did hear like a little snippet of the song, but previous to the Grammys, I have never heard of this artist before and or the song. So I, she could deserve it, but I've never heard the song, so I can't say much. But when I look at other people in the category, I think like Taylor Swift was nominated as well as Mm, I want to say maybe Steve Lacey and, or no, not Steve Lacey. I'm going to take that again. <coughs> Taylor, <laughs> Taylor Swift was nominated as well as I think um, Lizzo and Harry Styles. Mm -hmm. um, so when I see the other nominees, I am very familiar with those songs. So I have 
would have seen one of them winning, but yeah, I've never heard of this song before, so I don't really. It was a it, came, it was a very big surprise to me to see the shoot. No, it was a surprise for me too because there were so many other really great artists, and I'm not saying she's not a great artist, but usually with Song of the Year, like you said, it's songs that pe that were like really memorable and that people obviously really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So I think it was. Um, kind of an awkward choice, mm -hmm. but you know she worked hard. Yeah. That's why you know I'm not at the Grammy. So. Exactly, we're not on the Grammy yeah. board. We don't know how they choose their right. winners. So I'm sure she deserved it in some sort of aspect. But me personally, I, I don't know the song, so yeah, it took I me think, by surprise. Honestly, I think Taylor Swift deserved it because I love her. And she didn't take it any Grammys home that night. I know. So that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, that that's cr I didn't know she took yeah. didn't take any nothing. That's really sad. So there's, you know, some people got snubbed. Yeah, you're right, Emma. Some people are going to get snubbed. It's, it's the Grammys. And our final topic is Grammy history that was made with Beyonce winning the most Grammy awards of all time. She now has 32 Grammy awards in total. What do we think about this, Emma? So I think this was absolutely deserved. She's an icon and a queen, living legend, mm. everything. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> there's been so many eras we've seen her go through. Oh, yeah. And I think, especially with this album, um, she just, it was so different. And she's like stepping into a new time of her life where oh, she yeah. wants to like experiment, experiment with different music styles. And I think she really deserved it. She works really hard, so. No, yeah, I, I totally agree. I couldn't be happier that she's the most awarded of all time. She deserves it so much. Um, it's so cool to see her have success throughout her entire career, you know, starting off with Destiny's Child and then coming up all the way with her solo career. She's done so much and she deserves every single one of those 32 Grammys that she has. And I couldn't be happier that she made history with specifically this album because it's just such a great album and she definitely deserves the title of most awarded Grammy Award winner. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for gossiping with us about the 2023 Grammy Awards. And we'll see you next time on SHS This Month. SHS did a March Madness preview. Here it is. Welcome to the March Madness preview. I'm Sean here with Tag, Timmy, and Liam. Uh, we will be giving a quick preview of heavy favorites in the tournament along with a few dark horses to watch out for. The college basketball season has been wild so far and there are really no guarantees in this year's bracket. However, a few top dogs this year include the defending champs, Kansas Jayhawks, who return this year with a few new faces led by freshman Grady Dick. The Houston Cougars, who have continuously shown the grit and energy needed to win down the stretch in the tournament, and the UCLA Bruins who are returning a tough squad to game plan against that went to the Final Four last year as an 11 seed. So a few teams you should like in this year's bracket include the Alabama Crimson Tide, who when they're playing at their best, it's tough to say any other team's gonna beat them. And another team I like are the Purdue Boilmakers, who continue to be dominant while running their offense through AP Player of the Year, Zach Eddy. And my personal favorite, the Texas Longhorns, who continue to be successful despite the nonstop off the floor adversity the team had had to face throughout the season. And who doesn't like a great underdog story? March Madness wouldn't be Madness without the Dark Horses, so here's a few sleepers to keep an eye on. Starting with the Furman Paladines, who are returning their two best players from last year. Furman runs a high scoring, fast paced offense. They are projected to be a 12 or 13 seed, which could put them in a great spot for upsets. Next, we have the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles. They are projected to be a scary 11 or 12 seed who look to make another run in the tournament, like in 2021. They are shooting almost 40% from three and sit around number three in the nation for three-pointers made per game. They currently have four losses, which are all two good tournament teams. And without a doubt, the Kent State Golden Flashes are a team to look out for. As turnover margin is one of the best indicators for success and upsets in March Madness, they are number four in the nation on turnover margin, sitting around plus five turnovers per game. They control the pacing games and are a nightmare matchup for teams. Thank you for joining our Mar March Madness preview. Best of luck in your bracket. Finishing off, we have Liam and Sean with their NFL playoff recap. Hello, I'm Liam. And I'm Sean. After another successful NFL season, we are here with a quick recap of what went down in the postseason. Starting with the AFC and the wildcard round. The Bills beat the Dolphins, the Bengals beat the Ravens, and the Jags beat the Chargers. 
In the divisional round, the one seed Chiefs beat the Jags and the Bengals beat the Bills. In the AFC Championship game, the Chiefs beat the Bengals to head to the Super Bowl. In the AFC, starting with the wild card round, the 49ers beat the Seahawks, the Giants beat the Vikings, and the Cowboys beat the Bucks. In the divisional round, the one seed Eagles beat the Giants and the 49ers beat the Cowboys. In the NFC Championship, the Eagles beat the 49ers to head to the Super Bowl. The playoffs ended in a great matchup between both one seeds, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. With a final score of 38-35, the Kansas City Chiefs are the Super Bowl 57 champions. The game's MVP was Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Congrats on a great win to cap off an impressive 17-3 season. Thanks for joining us for the fifth edition of SHS This Month. 